knock me down and steal my teeth. These pieces make me emotional. So I've had some fun recently. We bought some good loose pieces and I was able to have some fun designing them. Welcome to Jewels of the Trade, the channel where nothing is made up and the facts do matter. Today we're going to be looking at natural, untreated jadeite jade with Chris Mason of Mason K. Let's start with these, Chris. Those are kind of a modern cut. Flat, squared edges, rectangular but rounded edges. Those are really fabulous. I just love them. And I love that we had the right little bead to accent and then those gorgeous baguette tops, which I really feel kind of balance out the design. With the triangle on the bottom and kind of the triangle on the top, very similar. The color is unbelievable. Even with your hair or my hair, it wouldn't even be an issue. They would pop. For everybody watching, Mason K Jade is the leading supplier of natural jadeite jade jewelry in the USA. So you can ask your local independent jeweler about shopping for all things jade, including Mason K original designs like what we're showing today. Oh, I love these. I love those. They're a great shape. I was really excited when we saw those because they're beautifully carved all around. They're rounded on the front and flat on the back, which I also love. I would wear those every day. I've noticed a lot of customers want their first jade purchase to be earrings. Mm -hmm. For women, like earrings are like a, a part of you. Yes. Like it's how it's part of how you express your personality is in like the size and style of your earrings. They hang beautifully and they feel really good on. And everything that Mason K sells is natural, untreated. And I think this is an important point to bring up the word natural. When we're talking about jade, that means untreated. Untreated. So it can't, yes, it can't be called natural and dyed. Correct. If a seller is calling their jade both natural and dyed, they're misusing that terminology and it's misleading. Correct. Often the word genuine is used. Oh, it's yeah. genuine jade. Well, we happen to have dyed it and polymer treated it, but it's it's genuine jade. Well, it's not really. That's kind of, that's, that's, that's not being clear. You need to be really careful. It needs to be untreated, jadeite jade, type A. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you really need to be careful and make sure if you've purchased something, we offer testing services. If not, see if they have a legitimate certificate with it. Because unlike other gemstones or unlike some other gemstones, the treatment is actually not good for the jade product. Correct. They're acid bleaching it, which yes. causes damage. It increases fractures. Yes. It weakens the integrity. They're dyeing it, which is not permanent. It's temporary. They're impregnating it with polymer, which is also expanding those fractures. So the result is a treated jade product is going to break easier. Yes. It's going to be way less valuable. Right, Chris? Like oh. so much less valuable. That, and that that's the biggest problem is that you're going to spend money on something and yeah. you have to be very careful because yes, once it's treated, especially if it's treated, well, either with dye or especially polymer, the value is maybe five or 10% of what you've paid. If that, it depends on whether someone wants to pay for it at that price. That's really, yeah. you know, but it just doesn't yeah. have the same value. And as you said, it doesn't have the same structure. Chris, have you ever had an instance where someone sends in a piece of their jade for testing, having paid a lot of money for it, believing that it's natural and unfortunately they find out that it's treated? Unfortunately so. Unfortunately it happens somewhat often. I recall one specific example of a customer that had gone to China and they were very excited about their trip. They bought a bangle. They spent $10,000 on this bangle on their vacation and they wanted to have it certified so and, and have uh, a value for insurance. And unfortunately, Jeff had to let them know that it was treated. And of course, there was no recourse now back here in the US. We never know if the seller knows what they're doing or not. They may not know simply or they may be unscrupulous. You never know. So that's why just be careful. Just be careful out there. Chris, what was the inspiration behind these earrings? I love these. I absolutely love these. And I wish I had hundreds and hundreds more of matched round flat pairs like that. I do not. Gorgeous apple green set in, you know, my happy yellow satin with the diamond top and lever backs. They're perfect. So I think it's important to point out that this is something I've been seeing on the internet a lot. 
these are not imperial, right? right? The, the t- words have to have meaning. Yes. And yes. <laughs> the term imperial jade is actually reserved for the highest quality of green jade eye jade. And it doesn't just refer to green jade in general. Correct. It is one of those words that's really thrown around imperial jade. Looking at that ring with the rubies. So that color is verging on imperial, but people call us, oh, all the time, oh we're looking for an imperial cab. And it's just a, it's just, it's thrown around. And so we have to be really yeah. careful when answering, what does that really mean? What do you really, what is the customer really looking for? Is it a rich color? Is it a bright color? How would you describe this color? A rich, deep green. Um, you know, the, the pieces in the stone might have some imperial properties. It's kind of that rich, darker color that we're looking for. And that's why I set mm-hmm. the rubies. I really think the rubies, because the rubies are so rich with the, the you know, 18 karat gold and then that rich, deeper color green. Uh, what was the inspiration behind the earrings? And the rubies kind of play off the, the kind of cabochon areas of the carving. So I kind of like that they kind of you know, kind of go yes. together in that way. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want to. It's it very three dimensional. Yes. Ooh, ooh, these. So this isn't Ruby, right? Those are not. Those are tourmaline. Tourmaline. What term- is tourmaline, Chris? What is tourmaline, Jordan? I don't know. <laughs> I'm the jade girl. Tourmaline is <laughs> an accent so stone. Tourmaline is actually a very large group of yeah. gemstones, minerals, really, and they can come in a huge range of colors. Uh, pink tourmaline is a really popular one because obviously, I mean, look at it. I think it pairs really well with jade. And what's so great about tourmaline is it is stinking affordable. Yeah. So having that accent is not going to add on to the yeah. price tag of your precious oh, jade jewelry. Jade is possibly the most mimicked stone in the entire world. The jade industry in China China is larger than the entire jewelry industry in the U.S. Did you know that, Chris? That sounds right. Yeah, it's like, I think like 33 billion in China for jade and like 32 billion in the U.S. just for jewelry. Like it's like, yeah, it's crazy. Like jade is huge. Yeah. The jade industry is bigger than the bridal industry, bigger than engagement rings, bigger than diamonds. Like it's huge. So it's impossible to really fathom the extent of Jade's international demand. That obviously leads to lots of fakes. And the vast majority of what's being sold as Jade on the American market is either not Jade at all, or it's been acid bleached, polymer impregnated, and dyed without disclosure. I mean, it could be glass. Yeah. Look for little bubbles. That I know. With glass, that you can tell. If you can look in magnifying glass. Look for little bubbles, uh, but glass, yeah. yeah, dyed quartz. I mean, just all kinds of stones. What was the inspiration behind this? Oh, first of all, that was a fun little bead. So I yeah. could have taken that green bead and just put it on a cord, and that would have been fabulous on a leather cord or a you know gold cord, gold chain. Or, but I wanted to have a little fun, you know, love the tassels. So I wanted to pick up the darker areas in the bead with the, the dark bead accents. Oh, I love these. These are so crazy unusual. First of all, they're unusual cut because they're kind of, you know, squared off, more modern cut. And then in those fabulous colors. They spin. Yes. It's a fidget spinner. Yes. This is a real classic. These are really fine beads. Not quite imperial, maybe more like fine apple um, because they're really, really bright and rich color. Now, that color is much more imperial. That's what we're looking for. It's kind of that rich color, but it's not too dark. They're just very small pieces, um, but they're close to imperial. They may not be perfectly translucent, but the color is really rich and juicy. I love sapphire and I love oh, sapphire. Oh, they're sapphire. They're sapphire. Cabochon sapphire Beautiful. with those really gorgeous, rich saf- um, green jade cabs. Those are really beautiful. They match really nicely to each other. And I love the milgrain bezels. It's really classic, but designery. That's great milgrain too. I mean, fantastic milgrain. Very hard to find that. And it's stackable. Yes. You could wear like four rings together and just throw this into the mix. I think it's a great wedding band. And this. Classic. Classic so ovals classic. with oval diamonds, beautiful milgrain bezels again, and those stones just glow. Look at them. They will just glow on your finger. They feel so, oh, it's just, a, that's another classic band ring. Yeah, gorgeous. Stackable. I mean, what a great wedding band. They say diamonds are forever. Jade's forever. Jade's forever. Jade, Jade's actually been proven to last longer. Yeah. <laughs> 
we have older jade. That's right. Than than diamonds. That's like right. as far as like been turned into jewelry and been worn yes. and been found. Yes. Like the jade pieces we found yes. archaeologically are older. Yes. So 